Drogon and Regal flew today, and something special may have happened. We may have just seen Drogon get pregnant. That gnarly flight may have been a mating flight. I base this on two prior examples, Silverwing and Vermithor, the Bronze Fury, and Tessarian, the Blue Queen, and Sea Smoke. But before we get to that, let's just make sure that we're on the same page in terms of the soul swapping of dragon bonding. When you work an animal, you exchange part of your identity. Think of it as a partial death. You lose part of yourself. You have a partial death, and it goes into the animal. Vice versa also happens. The animal loses part of itself, and it becomes part of you. That's why Aurel attacked John after John killed Aurel. That's why Summer growled the Jojen early in the books, because Jojen was annoying Bran, and a piece of Bran lives within Summer. That's why Shaggy Dog bit several people in the books, including Maester Lewin, because Rickon was young and he was neglected during some very hard times. He was wild, and Shaggy Dog became near as wild as Rickon. Here's a cool little nod to it in the show, with Rob Stark. I don't like being called boy. Insulted. Wolves and women wed for life, Hagen often said. You take one, that's a marriage. The wolf is part of you from that day on, and you're part of him. Both of you will change. When you work an animal, you exchange part of your souls. The same thing happens when dragon riders bond with dragons. They exchange part of their souls. When Nettles flew off on Sheepstealer, my boy Prince Damon, the rogue prince, he was pissed. Not at Nettles, he loved her. He was pissed at the fact that he had to send her away to save her life. Quote, no word of farewell was spoken betwixt man and maid, but as Sheepstealer beat his leather-brown wings and climbed into the dawn sky, Baraxes raised his head and gave a scream that shattered every window in Jonquil's tower. So, a piece of Damon lives inside Caraxes, and that's what we saw there. We saw Damon's pain, Damon's anger, reflected in Caraxes' scream. Here's one more before we get back to Drogon. Helena Targaryen's dragon was named Dreamfire. You know how I keep predicting that Cersei jumps out the window at the end of the story just like Tommen did? I say that because it's happened before, twice, by Helena and her daughter, Jehera. Check this out. The mother, Helena, she threw herself from the window and at the moment of her death, quote, across the city atop the Hill of Rainies, her dragon, Dreamfire, rose suddenly with a roar that shook the dragon pit, snapping two of the chains that bound her. We've even seen this with Danny and Drogon. That was the cry of a mother who just watched her child die. So, I think we're on the same page now. When you warg an animal, or when you warg a human like Hodor, and when you bond a dragon, you exchange a piece of yourself with the other. So, let's do this. We need to look at two dragon pairs. First, Silverwing and Vermithor. Silverwing and Vermithor used to be ridden by Good Queen Alisan and King Jaehaerys I, respectively. They were lovers. About 30 years after both Alisan and Jaehaerys died, these two dragons were still lovers, long-time lovers, just like their first dragon riders, because a piece of their dragon riders lives on inside them. Then we've got Tessarian and Sea Smoke. During the Dance of the Dragons, they fought in the air. But was it really a fight? Quote, One such said afterward that the flight of Tessarian and Sea Smoke seemed more mating dance than battle. Perhaps it was. And here's another good one. History calls a struggle between King Aegon II and his sister Rhaenyra, the Dance of the Dragons, but only at Tumbleton did the dragons ever truly dance. Check out the link above if you want the full details of this event. I did a reading, but long story short, Sea Smoke ends up fighting Vermithor, and Vermithor was a much larger dragon. But then Tessarium flew out of the sky and seems to have helped Sea Smoke, even though they weren't on the same team, at least in terms of their dragon riders. Unfortunately, all three of the dragons died that day. One dragon did not fight, though. Silverwing. And remember, Silverwing was in love with Vermithor. Get out your tissues. This is what happened. I took this out of that other video. Later, singers would tell how she thrice lifted Vermithor's wing with her nose, as if to make him fly again. But this is most like a fable. So, these are the two key points in this analysis. Vermithor and Silverwing were in love, just like their first dragon riders. Now that John has bonded with Rhaegal, Drogon and Rhaegal may fall in love, because a piece of Danny is in Drogon, and a piece of John is now in Rhaegal. It may have happened as soon as John bonded Rhaegal. If that's true, then that awesome flight that we saw, it wasn't a waste of CGI, like I've seen some people say. It was beautiful, and it was important. 
we may have just witnessed a mating flight. Because think about it, no one in the story knows how dragons mate. In all the books so far, that line about Tessarian and Sea Smoke having a mating flight, that's the closest we get to an answer. And if you did not know, in a lot of other fantasy stories with dragons, that's how dragons mate. They don't hop on the good foot and do the bad thing. They have mating flights. It's magical. They mate by doing a mating dance in the air. Sometimes they even sing songs to each other. So yeah, I think Drogon might now be pregnant. Don't be surprised if Drogon lays a clutch of eggs this season. The question is, if either of the dragons lays a clutch of eggs, will the humans keep those eggs? Or will they destroy them? According to the warlocks in the show and the pyromancers in the books, dragons are fire magic amplifiers. So unfortunately, the dragons gotta go.